a date here, the 22nd of May, 1981. It was the day the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe, was sentenced to life in prison on 13 counts of murder and 7 counts of attempted murder. He's one of the most notorious serial killers this country has ever seen. His last known victim, Jacqueline Hill, was from Middlesbrough. However, a new book claims Sutcliffe actually killed 23 more people. Yorkshire Ripper, The Secret Murders has been co-written by retired police officer Chris Clark from County Durham. And uh, he's live on the line now. Chris, uh, welcome to the show. Good morning, Mike. Now, this is quite a claim to be making then, so what has led you to this conclusion? Uh, it started off by uh, an attempted abduction by my wife when she was a a young girl in Cambridgeshire back in 1971, um, which had some bearing on Robert Black, the serial child killer. Um, I then moved on looking at other unsolved cases from the 1970s. And what have you found then? Why are you so convinced that Sutcliffe is linked to, to all these other murders? Um, I can actually um, place Peter Sutcliffe in the loose geographical area of each of the murders during the material time. And the frenzied uh, nature and method of the various attacks uh, led me to the conclusion I came to, including having um, made available three uh, pathologist reports. So what, what is the evidence that you've got then? Um, well, the, the, the evidence is, is, is varied, but um, basically uh, 22 women and one man, a bookmaker called Fred Craven, were mainly um, beaten on the back of the head with a hammer and in some cases garroted um, in various parts of the country, including seven in Greater London, six in the Midlands, two in Essex, two in Derbyshire, which included the miscarriage of justice of Stephen Downing for the Wendy Sill murder, and another one in Staffordshire, which featured miscarriage of justice for Andrew Evans. So why have these cases... Go not been investigated then by the police? Um, basically, um, West Yorkshire Police and the West Yorkshire Press at the time uh, unfortunately dubbed Peter Sutcliffe the Yorkshire Ripper, which became very parochial apart from two cases in Greater Manchester. So women in other parts of the country were going about feeling safe that he only was attacking in those areas, and likewise the police forces of the day which were very parochial minded at the time, never looked in that direction. Well, West Yorkshire Police have responded uh, to this, and they say that they'd not been provided with any new evidence. The force says it continues to review historic documents and that it's dedicated a significant amount of time and resources to do that. And it also says it's protecting information that uh, could prejudice future trials if it's made public. Uh, that, that is what they say, but when they came to see me in October 2013, I tried to get over to them a case of Gloria Booth, who hailed from the North East, who was attacked and murdered in West London, but they basically didn't want to know. So, have you spoken to family members, then, of these victims? Um, yes, I, I've made um, several contacts with victims, including um, Gloria's sister, who hails from near Gateshead. And she is totally convinced, um, having met me and read the various books on Peter Sutcliffe, that it was Peter Sutcliffe who, who attacked and murdered her sister. But you've, you've got to be very careful with this, haven't you, for, for obvious reasons? Oh, yes. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the main problem is a lot of people do not want their loved ones uh, having uh, been associated as being a, a victim of Peter Sutcliffe because... Again, quite wrongly, it was pushed out that he only attacked prostitutes. So, so what's your next move then? Um, I mean, well, clearly the, the book is out for all to say, isn't it? Yes, I mean, I, I have actually contacted the Home Office, the Home Secretary, um, various members of Parliament, but no one seems to want to take any notice. And why do you think that is? Um, I, I think basically Peter Sutcliffe is in Broadmoor under the pretext of being insane and he's basically too hot a chestnut for any uh, government department to, to reopen the case. It was uh, covered away very quietly all those years ago and that's where they want to leave it. And, and do you remember the, the, the feeling surrounding this at the time? 
Uh, well, um, not personally, because I was in Norfolk. Again, the feeling was it was remote from what was happening in West Yorkshire. But uh, I know the feeling in the north of England was very, very severe, that um, every woman was in fear of being attacked. What was it like, though? I mean, clearly, you were, you were working for the police at the time, weren't you? Yes, I, I was in Norfolk and Slavery from 1966 forward, and uh, as I say, it, it didn't really impact on us as, as a force. So, so nothing was said? No, um, uh, you, you've really got to look on the basis of say that these attacks were all at, occurring in West Yorkshire, apart from two in the Greater Manchester area, um, and no one was actually looking at that time in the direction of the Yorkshire River acting elsewhere. So when is the book out then? Uh, the book came out on the 29th of June, and we've had very favourable reviews on, on Amazon. Well, thank you for talking to me this morning, Chris. That's, that's uh, kind of you, Mike. Thanks very much. Uh, Chris Clark, then, who is a retired police officer uh, from County Durham, uh, talking about the Yorkshire Ripper, Peter Sutcliffe, who was sentenced to life in prison on 13 counts of murder, 7 counts of attempted murder. However, this new book claims that Sutcliffe actually killed 23 more people.